Those of you either who have a hardcover book or you've got a piece of paper, yeah, you have sure. Pardon? Yeah. 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 It's number 305. Uh, 305 in the hardcover yeah. book. Yeah. You have one? Yeah. Yeah. It's official. Hey, it's cool, eh? Yeah. It's cool. I love so, so this is a new one for our Unitarian yeah. Choir. And, uh, <laughs> Which is you. Yeah, all that's y'all. right. All y'all. <laughs> we saw this. Finally, spring is starting to pop, so we decided to do this piece since it's in the hymnal, and we can we can do it. If you want to stand over here, we can do the words together. Oh, okay. Okay. So you might might want to look at the words. Let's let's uh, just do the words first, and then we'll do the melody because it goes pretty fast. All the colors, yes, the colors we see in the springtime with all of its flowers, all the colors, when the sunlight shines out through a rift in the clouds and it showers, all the colors, as the rainbow appears when the storm cloud is touched by the sun, all the colors abound for the whole world around and for everyone under the sun. All the colors abound for the whole world around and for everyone under the sun. Just want to mention that this song is a, it's a Mexican uh, folk uh, song, but it's done to a Spanish tune, isn't it? No, it's a Mexican. <laughs> yeah, it's Mexican. All the way from from the colonial days. Ah, yeah. it's old. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to sing it in Spanish, we can sing it in Spanish. If you want to sing it in Spanish, you're on your own. <laughs> no, no, no. De colores, yes, de colores, de mis en el campo en la primavera. De colores, de colores, son palitos que vienen en la palera. De colores, de colores, el arco y resen la sir. Y por eso los grandes amores y muchos colores me gustan a mí. Y por eso los grandes amores de muchos de colores de muchos a mí. All right, English. Can we do it? Yeah, with the melody? We're going to play the melody. We'll just play it now. And we'll sing it. Oh, Yes, the colors we see in the springtime with all of its flowers. All the colors. When the sunlight shines out through a rift in the clouds and it showers. All the colors. As a rainbow appears when the storm cloud is touched by the sun. All the colors. 
Muchas gracias. Beautiful song. Yeah, it's a, it's a great song. Three oh five. Three oh five. As is tradition in the Unitarian, as is a tradition in the Unitarian faith, we light the chalice at the beginning of our service to set a space, a sacred space, for prayer, meditation, commuting, and this light also represents the light in all of us. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, now we have also an, uh, another little tradition, which is lighting uh, <coughs> small candles. If you have a joy or a concern, you'd like to share with everyone. So I'm going to light the first one, and it's I'm lighting this candle in thanks for our speaker today, who is Phyllis. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. So, Thanks for showing up. Does anyone else have a, a joy or concern? <laughs> Hi, Kim. Um, this is a candle of joy at, that I get to be back here. I've been gone for weeks. It feels like a long time. And, I, and who are I, you? I, I, my name's Keith. Oh, good. My name's Keith, <laughs> and, I, and I've missed you. <laughs> um, but it's also a candle of great joy because Jacqueline's down on the coast picking up Jillian and bringing her home. Oh. And uh, uh, I have just had a great visit with my mother in Edmonton. Oh, nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Behind you. Thank you. I'm Marsha. Um, this is a candle of gratitude and joy um, for the wonderful journey that Dale and I have just had together, holiday for the first time in seven years or so, um, which was a completely wonderful and magical event. And I am deeply thankful. And um, for Dale, who was my partner on this journey, I wish good health and long life. I am John, and today, if you haven't heard, is Earth Day, and uh, we will be parading uh, up Baker Street, or, yeah, up Baker Street, behind the Unitarian banner, so if anybody would like to join the Unitarian, the Spiritual Center community, uh, we're going to be doing it there. to light a candle, bring some light and peace and maybe some comfort to those that experienced the bombing in uh, Iraq last night. There's dozens of people killed and people in Syria as well who suffered from the, what's going on there. Yeah, amidst all the suffering and sorrow, I would like to celebrate um, his goal of reaching 100 years old tomorrow, George Luckton, the father of Diane and Kathleen Luckton. And, and April. April. And April, then tell him about George. Allie, and this morning the radio brought me a uh, kind of sweet memory, and I'd like to be grateful for that. We we're talking about handkerchiefs and how ecologic, ecological they are, and he did a whole thing on you know all the uses and what they're for, and it was it was very sweet. And I remember as because I was a little girl and had to wear dresses at school. Uh, had no pockets. So to take my milk money to school, my mother would pin a hanky and tie the money in the other corner. 
so I had, <laughs> that's, that was the memory that arose this morning for me. And I'm just grateful for the memory and, uh, and for the reminder that hankies are good ecologically. <laughs> Rachel is going to light for me. Otherwise, I'll set the place on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> Could be exciting. No, no. This candle is for Michael Pratt, who had a blood clot in his foot, and he is in Kelowna oh, wow. being attended to. Well, here's to hear Michael. Mm. Where you love him? Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just one more. Um, well, we'll light one more candle for any unexpressed uh, joys or concern that anyone has in their hearts today. Thank you. Now we're going to ask Michael to lead us in a little ceremony to welcome new members. Okay, I don't need the microphone. <coughs> Better turn it off. So, I'm Michael, and uh, I'm the uh, president of our board, and uh, so I have the great pleasure of uh, leading a ceremony where we have new members uh, joining today. And I'd like to start with maybe a prayer. We want to just get comfortable. It's a prayer for living intention. If we have any hope, of transforming the world and changing ourselves, we must be bold enough to step into our discomfort, brave enough to be clumsy there, loving enough to forgive ourselves and others. May we as a people of faith be granted the strength to be so bold, so brave, and so loving. Amen. And it's also, a, a, you know, I think a good time for me to take an opportunity to thank uh, the longtime members who have, who have held this space. Today's a perfect time to acknowledge the light and those among us who have metaphorically tended to the fields, planted the seeds, watered and fertilized them, and doing so have helped create a caring and nurturing place for people to explore and develop our spiritual understanding of ourselves. So Anne and Karen, who have been here for many, many years, uh, holding this space, we thank you that we're without you we wouldn't be here today. Amen. And we celebrate your light, and we're grateful for for that. Um, the other piece I wanted to share is what do uh, Unitarians believe? Like, what are Unitarians? What do they <laughs> believe? So I'm just going to give a little uh, <coughs> paragraph here that that sort of summarizes that. Unitarians believe that each person is free to search for his or her own personal truth on issues such as existence, nature, and the meaning of life, deities, creation, and afterlife. UUs can come from any religious background and hold beliefs and adhere to morals from a variety of cultures or religions. I don't know that you hear that in very many churches. And it's really, I like being Unitarian and claiming to be Unitarian because it's the way I want to see the world. I want to see us getting along with everyone and, and letting everyone be who they are and welcoming that and learning from each other to be our best. And that's why I'm a Unitarian too. So we're going to do a joining ceremony. Uh, we'll do this a couple of times a year when we have folks who would like to join. And I'm going to ask uh, maybe couple of members we already have from our executive, Ann and, and uh, Julie and Keith, maybe come up. <coughs> and maybe you could pass those out, please. And we don't have enough for everyone, but we can share. Mm -hmm. And Julie, can I have a couple of those back? And I'll give you those single ones. Okay. You're going to need them. So we're going to announce 
Uh, I don't want to have my back to you. So over the last couple of meetings, we've uh, said we're going to do a new member uh, meeting, and we'll do this a couple of years, or a couple of times a year. And so the process is a, a call and response. So you have in front of you a call and response. And I'll, I'll do the leader part, and the congregation will, that's everyone, will do the, uh, the congregation part. And new members, um, I think we have Morag, unless there's anyone else that would like to, to oh. okay. So we have two, um, so maybe you, you two can come up here with us right now. And, and I don't mean to put our backs to anyone, so you, you could be here and here. Okay. And I'll start with this. At our Nelson Unitarian Spiritual Center, we celebrate an ever-growing diversity of spiritual sentiment and human perspective, growing from the roots of Unitarian tradition throughout the world. Love, Love others are often. We quest for truth. We move our hearts in service to dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, so all souls grow in harmony with the divine. Thus we do covenant with each other. Unitarianism is a covenant tradition. We promise mutual trust and support. We invite our newest members to join us. And together you can... We become from a diversity of being human. We become to mutual trust and supportive friends that we will be heard and our participation welcomed. We bring our talents, our gifts, our wisdom and sharing. Do we open our circle to these dear ones? We, we open to receive you warmly, promising to mutual trust and support, and support guarding your dignity and worth as our own. With gratitude, we join this circle and let our light shine. Well, Welcome. <laughs> and and uh, Anne, if you would be so kind as to present our newest members with. Uh, it's a handsome pin with the Unitarian chalice and frame. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah. You're welcome. And and if the new members, if you wouldn't mind, please uh, come and sign our. This is our original charter, and we actually have uh, 15 or six, 16 members. And then we had another service in January. October was our initial uh, membership service, and then January we had three new members join, and today two more. So if you would be kind enough um, to... I would like you to sign the membership book. Okay. Let's, let's go. Thank you. <laughs> this one too? Yeah. Both, both of them. Okay. That one and this and we won't give it to Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This is taking me a little while. Well, Sorry. well, we can get that one after. Yeah, yeah, we can get that one after service. Maybe Sorry, just. Sorry, and I skipped just, a line there. Okay. Well, we'd like to. And we can get that book out. The other one we get later. Print it, and we'll get the other one later. Okay. Hang on, we'll get it out. Just leave it. <laughs> Before you sit down, we're come on back over here. <laughs> and you know we're doing a, a membership uh, service, and you know welcome to our two new members. Who, as members, you know you're you're part of the board. You vote on the board. You're part of the Canadian Unitarian family, and and uh, um, but we also, as Unitarians, recognize and welcome friends to come and uh, be part of our. Congregation, if you're not ready to be a member or not wanting to be a member, that's perfectly all right. We want you to come and uh, and be part of our our circle. And so, on the second page, what you have, 
there's a, 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 a another call and response that we're going to go through and it really welcomes everyone as friends or visitors uh, because that's important to us too that uh, uh, we're a welcoming congregation and I'll do the you're just going to do the all which is really quite simple. <laughs> we have gathered together this morning with intention, with joy, and with hope. We belong. So coming. everyone is, we all oh, okay. coming, coming all. as we do. Oh, no, I'm doing different all. beliefs. No, different no, no, no. Well, well, uh, uh, all you say is we we'll, belong. We'll start all, all over. <laughs> and, and we belong is just everyone because we all belong. Let's all start over. We've oh. gathered together this morning with intention, with joy, and with hope. We, we belong. belong. Coming, Coming as we do from many different beliefs, different life experiences, different cultures, and different points of view, we revel in this human diversity. We, we belong. belong. Drawn together, seeking truth, authentic connection through heart, mind, and spirit. We belong. Committed in affirming principles and drawing wisdoms from many sources. We belong. To share the moments of our lives and joys, the sorrows, the doubts, and the insights. We belong. To, to celebrate the spectrum of human experience. We belong. To explore all the known and unknown mysteries of our human existence. Member and friend, friend in the circle of love and respect, we belong. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do we want to skip meditation, or you want to? Huh? I'll do a quick one. Already. Mic? Microphone. Microphone. It's okay. <laughs> I just like. I'm going to read a very short. Uh, Peace, and I'd like you to listen, and then I'd like you to be quiet for a moment. So get comfortable. Take a nice deep breath. Beauty. Here on the table is the mixing bowl, brown and ordinary, turned on the potter's wheel. It has an umber rim and glazed cinnamon speckled sides. Its task is to be open, a simple space. This bowl is clay, earth, matter, particular. We are like it. Clay, earth, matter, particular and vast when we are empty. When life can fill us to the rim, brimming, we are the mixing place where terror, hate, and where love and hope, by the way we move, our smiles and uncertainties, our courage and stupidities are all embraced. We are the body bowl, the forming space, the home, possibility. Phyllis, she said, 
I have been a student and practitioner of various yogas for most of my life and am so grateful to the teachers and experiences which appeared and helped me along the way. Today, she has chosen this intriguing topic in the secret cave of the heart Two are seated by life's fountain. She said of her topic, this quotation is the beginning of a passage that I use frequently in meditation. Today I will talk briefly about passage meditation with some ex lovely examples of passages selected from the world's great scriptures and mystics. Questions and discussion will be welcome. Welcome, Phyllis. Thank you. Um, can you hear me all right? Perfectly well. Yeah, it's great. Good. Good. Well, that, thank you, thank you, Anne. That, uh, that, said, uh, that's, uh, that said things quite nicely, too, as an introduction. Um, I am going to talk briefly at the beginning about passive meditation. And uh, I was in uh, about 1998, 99. I was going through one of those times in my life when there'd been a tremendous amount of upheaval and uh, challenge and change that was going on. I was at crossroads where I was wondering, uh, you know, how, how am I going to direct my, the rest of my life? And uh, one of the things that, uh, that I came across at that time was uh, a book by Eknath Eswaran. And uh, it was called Dialogue with Death. And uh, it, uh, I picked it up because death was part of the change that was going on in my life at that time. And, uh, and I was very pleased to find that, you know, it was a good, it was very helpful. Uh, so, Egnathus Warren, um, actually, uh, is the person who um, taught meditation and was teaching the passage meditation. And so, uh, I, hadn't, uh, I hadn't met him and I hadn't read anything very much about him before that, but I started practicing his passage meditation and I found it very helpful. So I'm just going to give you a brief, actually, background to Egnath S. Warren because he has, he's an interesting person with an interesting background and I think it, it would be helpful to know that. So he was uh, born in India, in Kerala, which is the south, uh, south of India. And he grew up in a, in a large matrilineal family where his grandmother was the, uh, was the uh, the head of the family and also his actually his spiritual advisor, his spiritual teacher. <coughs> Excuse me. So the uh, um, it was a large family. There were lots. Of, everybody sort of lived together more or less, and there was lots of uncles and aunts and cousins, and he had lots of people to play with. And so on as he was growing up, there were also. Uh, a fairly well-off family, and uh, the children were all getting good educations, and so on. So when he was uh, an adult and working, he was actually had, had uh, was teaching um, in Nagpur University. He was a professor of English literature, and that was very to become very helpful to him as in the rest of his of his life and the work that he chose to do. Uh, so after uh, a few years there, he actually uh, came to the United States on a Fulbright uh, exchange program and landed up in California and uh, probably at Berkeley University, I think. And uh, he, was, he was teaching there and he was also teaching uh, some, um, about in Eastern mysticism and uh, he would written a number of books in India and they were uh, all available. They, uh, many of them in English, and uh, it, because of his uh, his 
talks and the, and the people, person he was, he, he started to draw a number of disciples around him or students around him, people who were very interested in what he had to offer and what he was teaching. And uh, the result from there was that he actually never went back to India to live on a permanent basis. In fact, he, uh, he became the founder of the Blue Mountain Center of Meditation, which is located in Tamales, California, and just north of San Francisco. And uh, they bought a large piece of land, and, uh, and uh, the, disi the disciples, the students, etc., that were with him, um, they all gathered around together, and, and they built the new meditation center there. And uh, I didn't have, unfortunately, an opportunity to meet him. Uh, by the time I got down to the Blue Mountain Center, um, he had actually died a couple of years before. Um, 19, I think he had been, it was about 1959 when he uh, set up the meditation center, or 1960, when it was, uh, it, it was, uh, going for in full in full flood at that point. It's still going. And you can all, you know, look it up and look up his name and uh, if you're interested in that and find out some more about, about what they're doing now. Because they're very active and they have uh, uh, their connections all over the world now and people who are using this type of meditation that uh, that he was teaching. So basically passage meditation what it consists of is um, uh, from the kind of the, the history of the uh, his sacred history of the world, um, he had uh, gathered together a large number of passages written by, uh, written from, drawn from different religions, all the religions of the world, mystics, etc. And he puts it into a book, and I have the book here right now. Well, God makes the rivers to flow. And his, this type of meditation, you just sort of look, look through material like this or any other source that you have and choose a passage that appeals to you and memorize it. And then when you uh, sit down to meditate, you basically speak and repeat the, the passage in your mind. And so um, that is the focus uh, of your mind, that's the focus of your concentration. You don't, at that point, worry about what does it mean, and uh, you know, it's appealed to you, you felt something for it, you wanted to memorize it and use it as a form of meditation. And as you concentrate on the passage, it gradually feeds into your own being and, uh, and, uh, and, and will sort of manifest itself in, uh, in different ways of understanding. So um, the, uh, the, the passage that I, the sentence that I began, began that I didn't use as a heading, was in the secret cave of the heart, two are seated by life's fountain. That's the first, the first sentence uh, from a passage that's taken from the, uh, one, one of the, uh, excuse me a minute, <laughs> one of the Upanishads, the Katha Upanishad. So what is, the, what is an Upanishad? Upanishad is probably um, one of the oldest mystical documents that we have in the world. It was, uh, they were, there was a number of them, and they were uh, first written down uh, around two, uh, two, uh, 200 years before the birth of Christ. But before that, they were um, part of the oral tradition of India, and they go back, way back into time. And, um, Ekta Theswaran uh, was a, a talented uh, translator from the Sanskrit, which had been the original, had original written in the Sanskrit. And, uh, and so a lot, quite a number of the, book, of the passages uh, are his own translations 
others are by other people and uh, that yeah so um, this particular um, one uh, appealed to me very much and I'll, I'll be talking to that in a few minutes just to go back to my own connection with the Blue Mountain Center I did uh, meditation I did go there actually a friend and I went down there and spent a week with them and talked to with them and uh, I was very helpful and we came back up and then later on I was spending part of my winters in Victoria there was a small group of people who were meditating using that form of meditation and uh, and so I, I joined in with them as well so in the sacred In the secret cave of the heart, two are seated by life's fountain. It's a beautiful sentence, isn't it? You can just imagine it and just see it. It's, it's, it's uh, yeah, it just is so evocative. In the secret cave of the heart, two are seated by life's fountain. The separate ego drinks of the sweet and bitter stuff, liking the sweet and disliking the bitter while the supreme self drinks both sweet and bitter, neither liking one thing nor disliking another. The ego gropes in darkness, while the self lives in light. So declare the illumined sages and householders who worship the sacred fire in the name of the Lord. That's the first verse or canto of the Kathy Upanishad. So I'm going to, I've got these now typed out for you, so I'm going to send, pass them around so everybody can have a copy, which will help. And so as, as I uh, said, the, uh, when, you're, when you're meditating using a passage like this, um, one isn't supposed to uh, worry about what does it mean, what, 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 what do I understand by this? <laughs> As Warren says, just speak the words in your mind. You can speak them out loud if you wish. And uh, those words will, will sort of sink into your, into your being as you concentrate on them. The whole idea of meditation is really to focus the mind, to stop the mind by focusing on a different something specific and uh, to stop the mind on all of its, its talking to itself, its, pl its play and so on. Um, so when you're uh, reciting the, the passage, you find, uh oh, you know, you, you've slipped off it again, <laughs> it's gone somewhere else. If you've only slipped a little way, don't worry about it, just bring it back and carry on. If you find out that you've gone somewhere completely different and, and it's disappeared on you totally, then just go back to the beginning and start again. And uh, just as, as the usual recommendations for, for meditation, your advice, you know, don't, don't spend a, a, an awful long time 
on it, but an hour, an, an, an hour is quite sufficient at the beginning, particularly, uh, probably early in the morning. Um, and uh, make a space for yourself uh, where you're got, not going to be disturbed uh, during that hour. And you can, uh, you can make it special room if you've got one, or you can make it space uh, in a room. And uh, you can put things there that, uh, that speak to you about this being a special place for meditation. When you sit to meditate, um, maybe just make yourself comfortable. You don't have to sort of sit, get yourself into a pretzel. And, uh, <laughs> with your legs are wrapped around your neck or something like that. Um, you can if you want to, and if you can do it, you know, I can remember spending hours trying to do it. Do not quite that, but certainly, thing. If, you, if you've grown up in a place like India, you've probably been sitting like that most of your life anyway, so it's not that difficult. The idea is basically to make yourself a space, a, sit, a sitting space where you're comfortable. So your body is not going to uh, keep, uh, keep uh, demanding that you pay attention to it. It's not going to start aching or uh, bothering. You just want it to be there. And, and uh, you sit with your back straight. And uh, if, you, if you lean back, I don't see what's wrong with that either, except that you do have a tendency to fall asleep. <laughs> The, um, the nervous system sort of tends to go groggy and, and you can fall asleep. So when you do that, just pull yourself forward and, and, uh, and uh, start to start again if you have to on the passive. But that's meditation. Um, are there any questions at this point? No? Okay. So if you have a question, just, just go ahead. As I said in, my introdu in the introduction there, questions and discussions welcome. So what we're going to do from now on, I think I've given you that kind of basis for the passage meditation, is we are going to have a look at what it means, <laughs> in fact. So we're not doing meditation now, we're just going to have a look at what is this particular passage and see what, uh, what in fact it means. Everybody has an ego. Do, do you all have egos? <laughs> <laughs> we all have egos. What do you mean by ego? You know? <laughs> what do we mean by ego? Ego means I am, doesn't it? It's the Latin for I am. And uh, the, the, the interesting thing is, uh, the uh, word that comes with it is it's separate ego. And uh, this, is, this is very important because Big ego is a separate entity, we'll call it. So it isn't even an entity. We're not even sure what it is, are we, really? But we have one. And, uh, and some of our feelings of uh, separation, loneliness, uh, depression, etc., fear, worry, you know, all these things uh, tend to be the, the result of ego. Well, that's what we call it anyway. The most sweet and bitter stuff, of course, is love. <laughs> it, comes, it comes that way. It comes both sweet and bitter. And, uh, of course, we like the sweet and, uh, and we dislike the bitter. But here we have a supreme self with a capital S who drinks sweet and bitter, neither liking this nor disliking that. So what's that mean? Don't but, take it all too seriously. Eh? Not to take it all too seriously, <laughs> the good or the bad. Yeah. Basically, yeah, the sweet and the bitter is, uh, is where we are. We're in this, the, we're in the, uh, uh, we're in the world physicality. We're in, we're in the world of duality. Duality, duality is all made up of, of opposites. Uh, sweet and bitter, bad and good, dark and light, and so on. <coughs> and we're always sort of understanding things in terms of its opposite. <laughs> so 
So the Supreme Self apparently doesn't do that. It's the part of that, uh, of those worlds of opposites. And uh, in fact, um, perhaps the Supreme Self, with the capital S, isn't living in the real world in the same way that we are. And Even though it's part of the cave of the heart. Yes. And yet, um, it is the Supreme Self who acknowledges within ourselves that it's all there for us to learn from. Mm -hmm. So it can't be good or bad <laughs> on some level, right? I mean, <laughs> it can't be good or bad that we're here. The way to go through this. They're all lessons. Yeah, okay. There's, um, there is a, a yeah, a, a um, approach that says that this is really a, a large classroom that we're, we're existing in. Um, but there's another way of looking at that which says, no, we're not here to learn, we're here to remember. Um, we know. We know who we are, but we've forgotten. And uh, the, per the, the process that we're going through is that which will take us into a place where we will we'll remember who we really are. The, uh, the next sentence, the ego gropes in darkness while the self lives in light. The light uh, is, uh, is something that is outside of, I think, the, 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 dark, the dark world of uh, not knowing who we really are, of being separate, a separate ego. Um, when I was very young, probably about three years old or thereabouts, um, I was just at that age where you're asking questions all the time. <laughs> and uh, um, the, my poor mum was very, got very tired of me asking questions. But the one question that just I puzzled me intensely was, why am I me? Why aren't I you or Auntie Edna or Uncle? <laughs> why am I me? That was the best way I could express something, which was really, really a puzzle to me. I, it didn't seem right that I was a me. <laughs> Anybody else experience something like that? Not that young. <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, it, 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 that sort of was a, 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 in Buddhist terms, that was probably a koan I came in with, which means that basically I, I want to find out why I am me and who I am. Now I know, of course, that it's part of the process that we go through when we're, when we're becoming conditioned and, uh, and uh, when we're beginning to uh, forget where we came from and who re we really are. And we're actually uh, um, learning that we are a separate ego. We're a separate me, if you like. If I am me, you and you, you're not me, you're you. And that was what was puzzling to me. Why, why am I not you? Um, that's, I can understand why my mother was so frustrated. <laughs> um, we have, you know, we become, we are becoming something separate. We are becoming a separate ego. And, uh, and while we do so, we've, we're forgetting, and forgetting who we really are. And now, and particularly nowadays, we seem to be talking quite a lot about oneness, so we're hearing that quite a lot now. And um, about what? Oneness. Oneness. Okay. oneness. Okay. And and oneness. Um, oneness is saying that in fact we're not separate. We're all one thing. We're all one. And uh, in some ways, we know we're, we're separate. 
this is if I'm me and you are you and this is it and that's it you know it's all separate from me but in another way um, we are all we are all one so um, Later, late, as I said in the introduction there, and, you know, I studied a lot of, I was doing yoga for a long time in my life. I started doing uh, happy yoga right at the somewhere early, early 20s and carried that through. I did it this morning and before I came out and uh, I, I now got Pilates in with it as well. So, um, I was still following uh, that question because I hadn't had it answered. <laughs> and um, so for, uh, I, you know, I went through the usual things that, that probably most of us have gone through, and that is that um, I really reached a, a stage in my sort of later years of teenage, being a teenager where I was saying, God is, you know, God, you can't be a God. There really can't be a God. Uh, I had uh, I had not had a, a religious uh, upbringing. I wasn't in a religious family, but I had been uh, uh, sent to a, a Roman Catholic school <laughs> to be educated, and so I had been very immersed in, in in that. Though, as I wasn't a Catholic, I was considered to be a non-Catholic, and that meant that. Um, we didn't learn catechism and, uh, and things like that, but we still got, I got a lot of it imbued with a lot of the uh, Catholicism while I was a part of the school. But I came to a stage where I said, that this is ridiculous. It, 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 God, God can't exist when there's so much pain and suffering in the world. And, uh, Interesting if we kind of go back in the history of, the, of, uh, of human beings is that primarily we, we, we for a long time, particularly in the Middle Ages and, and, and later, God exists but is outside us. And uh, we're, we're uh, going through this process and we have to obey follow the instructions about uh, how one should live and how one should not sin and woe we'll betide if we fall into mortal sin and uh, anyway my my reaction at that time was to say there there is there isn't a god but uh, I'm, I'm going to be a humanist. And so at that time I was reading Kierkegaard and, uh, and, and people like that. Who were, and, uh, and also at that time I was uh, married and having children and that was a lot of things to be taking my time and attention as well. And, uh, It, it came about at a certain point uh, in my life that, that uh, as I say, I was still doing yoga and I was still doing Hatha yoga. I started to do, I was, I was uh, uh, studying at the university and I started to uh, do um, uh, yoga and meditation classes. And uh, it was a different type, it was not passage meditation, it was a different type of meditation. And I began to uh, have some different experiences. I met, I met uh, a teacher and uh, eventually I went um, to stay with uh, the Ashoda Ashram, just across the way here on the other side of the lake. And I was there for about three or four years. And so there's an, uh, uh, quite a lot of, um, I'm trying to sort of say something that's meaningful to you without going into a lot of detail and also without missing the point here. And that is that there's um, the different practices that, that yoga 
that yoga follows. I was, I was practicing. And it came to the point one day, probably after I'd been there about three years or so, and I'd been sitting uh, in, a, in a discussion group with, uh, with, uh, with Swami Radha, the uh, spiritual head of the ashram. And um, after it was over, everybody had left and gone off to their, to their lunch. And uh, I had an experience which just changed, changed things totally for me. And the way I expressed it was, I used to think that I am, but now I know it's all I am. It's all I am. And it's all consciousness. It's all consciousness. And the experience was just overwhelming in the sense that uh, it, was, it was sort of the total oneness of everything at that point. And uh, I went to uh, I went to see uh, Swami Radha afterwards to tell her the experience, and uh, and uh, her friend, another uh, student who was there, she said, "What did you do after that?" And I said, <laughs> "Well, actually, I went and had a jolly good lunch. <laughs> 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 I didn't want to miss my lunch." <laughs> Oh, no, she said, no, 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 that's wrong. <laughs> but, um, How long did it last? Very brief. Very, very brief. I wouldn't even sort of know how. You know, that I remember being here one day when, uh, uh, I forgot the name of the person, a man who was t talking, uh, asked if anybody in the group had a, had experienced a place where there was no time, a situation in which there was no time. And to his surprise, quite a number of people in, in the group put their hands up and said, you know, we, we've been there. And I think that's, that's the situation. When you move into that sort of place, you're out of this, uh, this world of time and space, this, this world of dualities, this physicality that we're in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but it it was it it was very brief. I don't know what would happen, Keith. Quite honestly, if it wasn't brief, <laughs> I'd probably <laughs> disappear or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but the supreme self. This is the for me. This is this is the self with the capital S. This is the I am that I experienced at that moment. It's the true I am, and it's the it's what we've uh, come here to, to remember. Remember, and uh, I don't know what else I'm going to say at this point. I think maybe I shot my bolt actually. <laughs> um, any questions? Any comments? I just want to say the truth is the truth. Mm. It doesn't really matter the path. Like, you know the truth when you need it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I really appreciate what you have to say. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The oneness of all beings. Would you like to say more about your own experiences? No. No? Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? <clears throat> Yes. Did, did it feel to you like it was a culmination of your, your, your study and, and your practice? Was, uh, it the, was it the fruit? Yes, or? yes, it did actually. Yeah, I, I felt I had reached something. That question that had been part of me all the time, why am I me, you know, why aren't I you, why is that? Um, I, I had the answer. It's, it's, I am, and we're all I am's, aren't we? We, we all say I am. We know, we've, uh, but we're all kind of spiritual seekers too, so we, in some way or other, we know, you know, there's uh, the, the I am. Um, is that it's all I am. So, um, the I am is what we used to call God, I guess, or still call God if you want to, if you want to use that word. I mean, I will use the word self because to me it was an I as a self. 
And I think in a way it's also like a, uh, a wonderful um, um, song that's going on all the time. Like, I am, I am an absorbed consciousness. Hmm. Yeah. Yes, Richard. Um, when you were speaking, um, I was reminded of the notion of atoms and molecules and um, that, that we, we are all one. <laughs> we are all one of the um, atoms and molecules that go to make up everything. Mm -hmm. And so, and so it's, finding, it's, it's finding the connection inside us that allows that to be open to happen. Is, is a little bit, for me, what you're talking about. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. I think it was uh, uh, Alan Watts that said that the earth peoples. That's one of the things it does. I mean, it trees, and it fishes, and it peoples, so that we are, we are of the earth, you know, so that we are, we're all part of that. And we're the, the flow of the spirit, that's, that's everywhere, that's everything, but, uh, you know, mm -hmm. so just remembering Alan Watts. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I thought it was interesting when you said, when you were ending your talk, that you said you shot the bolt. <laughs> and it's an archery term. Mm -hmm. And I remembered, it reminded me that I, in another tradition, someone had shared with me that a sin is an archery term for, term for missing the mark. And I think for remembering that we're part of everything and that we're good enough, we have to remember it's okay to miss the mark sometimes. It doesn't exclude us. And I think, uh, I often wonder why we wouldn't be in happiness and in love with everything all the time and, and why we would think we're not worthy, you know, that we've made mistakes, we've made yeah. sin. Yeah. Yeah. That just helped me. That's a major, that can be a major stumbling block. I'm not worthy. And we've kind of been taught that. You know, we've taught to think that. Heavens were supposed to come with original sin. <laughs> no. Nobody can be uh, lost. We're all part of the, the one. Joy. Joy. Without each of us, we're, uh, I mean, we're all, it, is, it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. exist. There's, um, Another uh, way of expressing which I which I heard, and that is that the self, with a capital S, exists. It exists. Uh, we used to say the humans used to say God is up there. You know, the gods are up there. Then it became God, a single God, uh, is outside of us. And we will have to answer for well, however we've lived our lives and what sins we, you know, we, we uh, uh, have to, as we've been going through life. Um, we're we're not. God isn't out there, and we're out here. Um, but in a way, we're inside. We're inside it because we're part of it. We're inside. There's no outside. You know. There's another another quote from another passage, if I could remember it. Um, not wounded by arrows, nor burnt by fire, affected not by water or wind. The self is not a physical creature. Not wounded, not burnt, not wetted, not dry. The self is ever and everywhere, immovable and everlasting. Mm. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Very much. Oh, my goodness. All right. Thank you. That was very helpful. I think uh, it uh, really clarifies um, what, what most of us believe. Um, thank you. And um, I'd like to say that uh, uh, we'd like to thank you all who are donating in a, a basket that helps with the expenses we have, uh, rent and so on. And also if you 
there are envelopes here, and if you would like to put your donation in an envelope, we keep track of, and put your name on the outside. <laughs> we keep track of it, and we'll give you a receipt at the end of the year for income tax purposes. Mm -hmm. So, when I, when I do together, thank, together thank we. And uh, we have uh, Oops. a couple of announcements. Well, hang on now. We're going to just say, together we, what, I, what, what are the words? From now? you, Who I receive, to, to you, I give, together we share, and by this we live. And may it be a blessing wherever it goes. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Alan. I think we should put so, <coughs> announcements directly after the service today. I think Michael had something to say. Maybe we'll put the candle out and end the service before we do announcements. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I can do that again. You can just blow the other ones up. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Yeah, thank you, too. <laughs> So directly after the service today, there will be a regular board meeting downstairs. On the first Tuesday in May, the first, May the 1st, 7 p.m., Stacy Kosnikov, who was our speaker two or three <coughs> weeks ago, is offering a meditation class. On Saturday, May the 5th, the Nelson Choral Society prevents, presents a choral Katie, Songs of the Maritimes in Newfoundland at 7.30 p.m. at the United Church. And then uh, John Dahm is leading a drum circle here at 6.30 on the first and third Mondays. And the next day, date is Monday, May 7th. Bring your own drum. <laughs> Morag Reed is having her laughing yoga class here at 7 p.m. each Tuesday of the month. And uh, each third, 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 third Tuesday. Tuesday. Each third month. Tuesday. Yeah. And last Tuesday, every every time she gives it, there are more people coming. And she has, 23. It's a great day, a great way to loosen yourself and just let go and laugh and get more energy and, and breath. So it's very helpful. Next Sunday, our speaker is Jerry Levinson. Oh who has chosen the topic psychotherapy versus meditation. <laughs> <laughs> there, will, there will be further details about him and his topic in the next <laughs> newsletter. Come in. Are there any further announcements? I, think, well, I just said the parade this afternoon at 3 o'clock, at, starting at the rail yard. Yeah, I just wanted to also welcome, we have guests from Chicago, and thanks for joining us today. We'll have some time as we tidy up to have tea and maybe chat with each other. And uh, exciting, this weekend, Ali and Julie will be traveling to Vancouver to do some Unitarian uh, chaplaincy training and seeing where they might fit with that. And so uh, we may have a chaplain, that chaplain be, be able to provide services for blessings or memorials or joinings and that sort of thing. Uh, as well, Keith and I are traveling to Hamilton the uh, second week of May to attend the uh, uh, Canadian Unitarian Council annual general meeting where Nelson will be recognized as the newest uh, Unitarian congregation. And uh, you, can do, you, can, you can go online to their website and you can actually uh, webcast they're going to webcast the, the uh, parts of it in the AGM, so cool. if you want more information, we can get you that. And we're attending the, the training, the conference weekend, and 
probably come back with some new ideas and new mm -hmm. friends we've met. Um, I think that's it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes, Keith. Oh, and I, I wanted to announce an event uh, tomorrow night on Monday, April 23rd. Um, Grand Chief Stuart Phillip, who's the uh, president of the Union of BC Indian Chiefs, is uh, speaking at the Nelson United Church about the Kinder Morgan pipeline question. And uh, there's also a photographer, a great photographer, Garth Lenz, who's photographed the pipeline route and, and uh, the tar sands and a lot of things. And he'll be doing a, a slideshow as well. So uh, the Council Canadians and uh, the indomitable Nadine Podmorov are organizing this event to Which find out. That? It's at 7 at Nelson United. And there'll be a silent auction to raise some money for, for the, the, the push in Burnaby. And the following Saturday at Nelson United Church, uh, we're having an action workshop from 12.30 to 4.30 to see how we can, the people who are interested in participating and joining in and show, doing some action as well on the issue of the Kinder Morgan Pipeline. So that's Saturday the 28th, and that's at Nelson United Church from 12.30 to about 4.30. And I'm one of the people organizing that. Can I add one little thing to that? Thank you. If it, one little thing to that, if anybody's interested in following up with what Carl Perrin is doing at the moment. I get all the UCV environment information, and it's very interesting to know the issues and the court the court challenges and the uh, charges. Uh, if anybody wants me to forward them that information, let me know. Mm -hmm. Anything else? <laughs> Got a lot, lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. Well, thank you again for coming. And we'll see you next Sunday. Go now in peace. Go. No. 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 All right. Go. Go. Go now in peace. All right. Go now in peace. Go now in joys. May the spirit of love surround you everywhere. This is um, John. John is um, uh, a Sufi, and this is his chef. Chef, should be right here. Anyway, but this is, um, it's, it's just, if it, you read just one thing every week, it's really a lovely, lovely book. Anyway, yeah. she's a great, yeah, she's a really great human being. Okay. <laughs> um, what I like to say, but I don't want to Thank you.